So this is my second Deep Discussions video, and today I'd like to focus on a theory called determinism. And basically, determinism is the idea that our universe as we know it is the way it is. There's only one single reality, and that every event can be somehow predicted. Now, this goes against so many people's beliefs, so sorry if this is offensive in any way toward whatever religion you might practice, but um, basically, if you think about it, determinism is logical in some sense. If you think about the flip of a coin, so you flip a coin, you know, you're going to guess heads or tails, and at a glance you'd think there's a 50-50 chance of one or the other happening, and that's the way we look at it. But, in reality, there's a 100% chance of one certain outcome happening. If you really wanted to, you could figure out how many times per second the coin's flipping, what speed it's going at, find the air resistance, figure out how it's going to bounce when it lands, and you actually could figure out if it's going to be heads or tails. So, if someone somehow had the brain power or a computer to analyze every fiber of the universe, they would be able to, in theory, predict the future. Because, um... Some people believe that when there's a 50-50 chance, like flipping a coin, it creates two alternate realities. And I used to sort of buy into that thing, but then when I thought about it, it's like, well, the coin is only flipping one way. It's not like, for there to be two possible outcomes, there have to be two possible beginnings, and it only you only flip it one way, it's going to land on heads or tails. So, um, or like there might be a 1 in 100 chance of someone getting in a car crash, and in one reality, they get in the car crash, and in 99 others, they don't. And, of course, that would create this extremely intricate web of possibilities, creating trillions of possibilities in new universes daily. So much so, that I don't know how this web of realities would possibly function. But, um... So, anyway, with determinism, this... It makes sense when you think about it. I mean, like... Sure, if you wanted to look at every single molecule, you could figure out what's going to happen exactly 100 years from now. I don't think we will ever have anywhere near the capabilities of doing that, but in theory it's possible. Now, if you apply that theory to living things, like humans for example, could you then predict people's thoughts and actions? Well, yes and no. I, I don't think you could really accurately predict someone's actions since we have no way of really measuring the human mind. But when you think about it, the way people act is only a result of every single experience and thought they've had, every person they've met, everything. Like, um, you know, I might choose to go have some ice cream today only because uh, when I was five, I tripped and fell on the sidewalk. No matter how irrelevant the two events are, one little thing could greatly affect my future, whether it's uh, buying an ice cream cone or moving to a different state. You never know. It's like a trickle-down effect. It could just... Not a trickle-down effect. Just a butterfly effect, you can call it. But, um... Basically, the tiniest event can cause so much more to happen just because as long as it's at the source, it affects such a wide range of possibilities. So, with this theory, if people are only acting the way they are because of their past experiences and ideas, does that mean that there's no such thing as free will? It sounds absolutely ridiculous. It's like, of course there's free will. I'm going to go see such and such movie because I choose to. Well, sort of. You're choosing to only because you've been molded and morphed by your past experiences. Um, personally, I think that's the truth of it. Free will, it's nice to imagine there being free will. It's not like we would notice if there was or not. It feels like we're making our own decisions. But... In reality, it's not really possible to make your own decision. No, your your memories make your decision. Your event makes your decision. Your event, your events, your experiences <laughs> make your decisions for you, almost. Um, sort of scary to think about. It's almost like you have absolutely no control over your life. It's like, uh, my friend once said, it's like a roller coaster, pretty much. You just sort of see where life takes it, just go with it. Now, um can be a little scary thinking, you know, wow, what if we really did have no control over our lives? Um, of course, it feels like we have control over it, plenty of control, but if we're not truly making these decisions, you know, who's the one in control? Is it some other being up there, or is it just the way things are? 
So I'm going to stick with the latter and think things simply started at point A and are going to end up at point B. I don't know what point B is going to be. I don't think anyone does, but it's out there. And we're just sort of on this train track to our fate or destiny, whatever you want to call it. So um, I don't think it's possible for anyone to truly accept this theory since it's almost beyond our comprehension. It just seems to turn our world upside down as we know it. But it's sort of nice to think about, like, you know, I've got tons of finals coming up, and, you know, I might be, like, panicking in a couple of weeks and go, oh, my God, how am I possibly going to survive all this? But then I just sort of think about it, and it's like, no, you know what? I'll study a bit, and then let's just see what see will happen. You know, worst thing that can happen is, you know, I'll fail a final, and that would really suck, but I'll live. So, um, you know, I, I guess if you really could fully accept this theory, then you'd just be able to see where life takes you and be completely relaxed and carefree. And, um, and of course, that decision would only be a result of your memories, and of course. But, um, it's a very different concept, and it's, like I said, it's so far beyond our comprehension, it's just hard to wrap your head around. And another thing that comes into play is blame. It's just human nature to blame someone, like, someone walks over to your table and intentionally knocks a drink off of it. You're gonna blame that person because they you know, just walk up and smash something off the table, it was probably not an accident. And they might even claim themselves it was intentional. But if they're not in control of their free will, if they don't have free will, then that event could have been the result of any memory, anything they experienced in their life. And it's, I don't think it's possible to not blame people, you know, if that happens to me, I'm not going to be like, oh, that's okay, that's only because your 12th birthday party was a disaster that you did, that you knocked my cup off the table. You know, of course, I couldn't know exactly what event caused it, uh, nor could the person who knocked the drink off the table. It's just mind-boggling. It really hurts my head to think about. But, um, so, I don't think, I mean, it's like I can look at this theory as an interesting idea, but I don't know if I can genuinely live my life by it. It's like so many values out the window. Like, oh man, I don't even want to begin to explain it. But um, so share your thoughts on this idea of determinism. And um, you can see how it sort of interferes with religion. You know, how can some outside being be affecting our world as we know it if it's already set in place, set in stone? But um, that's about it. So, thanks for watching. Please post video responses if you have the time or energy to do so, or at least post some comments, and just give me some feedback in general. Thanks for watching.